Hello everybody, so I'm filming this on the 25th of February 2021 and it's now just been announced officially what's going to happen in terms of your grades for GCSE, AS and A-levels in 2021. So I'm Lewis Matheson from the channel Physics Online and I've made hundreds and hundreds of videos to help you in every aspect of your GCSE or A-level physics course. But today I want to go through what's going to happen or what might happen over the next few months. Now the document I have here, it was actually uh, written on the 23rd of February, so a couple of days ago, but it's now been published and I found it on the Department for Education website. There's a link in the description below. So this is really dealing with England. And this is what Ofqual, the Office for Qualifications, have to do. And then they're going to kind of give this information out to the exam boards, who will then feed it out to your teachers and other people involved in your grades this year. So we know that your teachers are going to be giving you grades, and this just clarifies it. So um, I've got the document here. It's a big old read, but I'm just going to go through the important things that you need to know about as a student. So. Um, there was a consultation back in January. Over 100,000 people actually replied. So this includes students, your parents, carers, and also teachers. And they've actually made a couple of small minor changes, nothing major. But basically, your grades this year are going to be awarded by your teachers at your school. OK, so be nice to them because they're going to be the ones in charge of actually giving you the grades. And it's going to be based on a range of evidence. So it's not all determined on one big exam that you do in school. And in terms of the evidence, I'm going to cover it later, but it's not just one exam that's kind of the make or break thing that gives you the grade. It's going to be based on maybe your classwork, the work you've done recently during remote learning, and any smaller assessments that you might complete when you go back into school in the next week or so. So... This is, it's going to be, do you, know, do you know, I'm really pleased in a way that I'm, I do miss teaching, but I'm very glad I'm not the head of science at my old school at the moment, because I can imagine for teachers, this is going to be a nightmare trying to decide what grades you actually deserve, because it's not easy. Ultimately, they want all of you to get really good grades because it makes them look better, but they know they can't just give the whole class grade nines. So it's going to be really difficult for your teachers. Um, and the advice in here, it's not just for GCSEs and A-levels, it also includes things like the IB, for those of you who might be doing the International Baccalaureate, uh, pre-U for a few of you doing that, and also those of you doing your EPQs. So this might mean that if you started your EPQ project, you don't have to write that massive essay at the very end, you'll still get a grade for your EPQs. Uh, in the absence of official exams, which are marked by the exam board, your teachers are best placed to determine grades, which is true. They know how you're getting on in class, they know how well you're working, and they know what you're capable of. And it says here that your teacher's judgments are going to be based on the content that has already been taught. Now, by this time, the majority of you will have probably finished your courses for GCSE and for A-level. There might be a few little bits and pieces still remaining, but the majority of the course is normally taught by this time even though you probably missed a load of school at the end of um, the summer term last year, and also you've missed a load of proper good quality teaching recently, because it's just so much more difficult to do that remotely. But your teachers, they're still going to have to make a judgment based on as much of the course as possible. So not just one or two modules that they kind of get you to cram about and just learn everything about a small part of the course. There still should be a broad range of content and this allows you to progress to that next level of education. For example, if you're going to be doing A-level physics next year and you're currently doing GCSE physics, then you want to make sure that you've covered as much of that GCSE content as possible so it helps you going into next year. Likewise, at A-level physics, it, you want to have done enough of that course so when you go to university, you understand the things that you might be learning about in your first couple of years. So there's a balance of trying to do some stuff really, really well, while also assessing you on a much, as much of that course as possible. Um, it's really down to teachers to use their expertise to decide which evidence is going to be used. Now, sometimes this is going to be outside of your teacher's control. It might be there's a whole departmental policy within your school, and therefore your teachers are working with the heads of subject, or it might even be that your school is part of a multi-academy trust, and in which case it might not be down to your individual teachers about which bits of work are used. It might come from several schools who are kind of deciding the best approach. Now, 
There will be some guidance from the exam boards that goes to your teachers, but ultimately that's out of your control as a student. You've just got to find out from your teachers what they want evidence for and how they want to collect that evidence. Um, but I suppose here it's basically saying that any future assessments could potentially be undertaken remotely if this was stuff that you're maybe doing at home in case schools have to close down again, in case of the cluster of cases and you're sent back home. So there will be the, I suppose, the option of doing some of these assessments remotely. Hopefully that won't happen, but hopefully because you've been improving recently, you can now have this kind of thing to aim for. There will still be some assessments that you might be doing not necessarily sat in the exam hall, they might be carried out in the classroom. And this allows you to show your teachers what you're truly capable of. And that's why it's really important that you keep working hard for GCSE and A-levels at the moment. There is some stuff about coursework. I guess the big change for coursework is it's not going to be externally moderated. So the, that doesn't have to be sent off to the exam boards for them to double check the marking. That's very much carried out just in school. So. What the exam boards are going to be doing, so AQA at Excel, is they're going to be providing some material that your teachers have the option of using. They don't have to use it, but I think it's something they probably will, because this will include sets of questions. It does say some of them might have been published, so this may be from a previous past exam paper, or it might be unpublished, and that means you won't have seen it before the exam. So if I was a student, I would be going on uh, trying to find any past papers which have been published, perhaps from 2018, 2017, and I would be doing all of the past papers for that exam board. That's kind of good advice anyway, but you can't just do past papers and think that those questions will come up. There's gonna be some stuff that you, mo you won't have seen before. This will then be released at the end of March by the exam boards, but there's no set date for you to do that. So it's not like everybody in the country is going to be doing these exam board papers on the same date as long as everything's been completed for your school to submit your marks by the 18th of June. Now that's quite early in the school year. And the reason for that is that your exam uh, results date is gonna be brought forward. Now something which is really positive coming out of this is that it's the work that you do which is going to give you your grade. It says that students should have their grades determined by the standard of their work. Now that means it's all on you now to show just how much you actually know. And basically what it says is that the results that you get um, are a reflection of your teacher's judgments. Those grades don't get sent off and then they're moderated down depending on how your school got on in previous years. It might be that in previous years there were lots of low results at your school, but that shouldn't mean that you can only get a low grade this year. Basically, um, the grades won't necessarily follow how your school's done in previous years, and that means the grade that the teachers submit is the one that you're going to be getting. Your teachers aren't going to give grades like they did in 2020, which might then be downgraded. So that's not going to happen, and that gives you a higher chance of getting a higher grade and actually showing what you're capable of. But that means it's down to you to do the work from now on. And results day it's going to be a lot earlier than normal. It's going to be a couple of weeks earlier at the start of August, so the 10th and 12th of August. The reason for that is it allows any appeals to be made in plenty of time before you go off to college or go off to university. And in terms of the appeal process, they've tried to simplify it. So, first of all, uh, you might get given your grade. If you think that the grade that you've been given is wrong, then you need to go to your school or your centre. So the first thing you need to do is your school you ask them to check for any errors, and it might be that somebody's typed in the wrong number on the form that's submitted. In that case, that can obviously be sorted out. Now, if the school says, yeah, you've got a grade six, that's what we think you should have got, then the student can submit an appeal through your school to the exam board. And there'll be more information I do in another video about appeals, but basically, if you appeal your grade, just be aware that it can go up or down. I suspect there's going to be quite a lot of appeals coming up and that's why they've tried to simplify the process. They've made it easier for students or parents to actually get the appeals through the school and up to the exam boards. And um, if ultimately you're not happy with the grade, there will be at some point a chance for the autumn exam series where you could have a go at doing the real exam. Now, a lot of people watching this are private candidates and I always tend to leave you out. So for private candidates, um, you will get a grade this year, provided you can do something at a recognised exam centre. 
and it says that they will be assessed in a similar way to other students and it in could include taking the exam board provided assessment materials in a suitable form. So the way I see this is that you've got to register with an approved or recognised exam centre and the details of that will be released quite soon. You might be doing some of the papers which have been um, made by the exam board, perhaps AQA or Edexcel, and based on that information, that's how you can get then a grade. So there is the opportunity this year for private candidates, but ultimately, if you're not happy with the grade that's been given, there will be a full series of GCSE, AS and A-level exams in the autumn term for you to have a go at. There's also information if you are doing NVQs or things like that, or uh, T-levels or something like that, there's more information in the document, but I don't want to go through that just now. Um, but there's lots and lots of stuff here. So, um, yeah. What does this mean for you? I know I've been going on about it for a while. Basically, you've got to wait for your teachers to tell you, once they know actually about what form of assessment and evidence that they will be gathering over the next few months when you get back to school. It's going to be a bit weird going back to school to actually see your friends again, to see the teachers, but hopefully they'll make it very clear about evidence that they might be submitting. And really it's down to you now to show your teachers how much you've learned over lockdown and to actually have that kind of positive attitude that you can do it. That includes asking your teachers for help when you're seeing them in school so you can revise the right bits of the course, doing lots of independent work yourself. So that includes doing as many questions from past papers, uh, perhaps studying the areas that you're, you know that you're struggling with. And ultimately that means your teachers will then have more evidence about how much work you've done and the grades that you're capable of getting. It is um, an unprecedented uh, situation, as has been said many times. I suspect this year, though, that grades will be inflated, and that means the teachers will give you the benefit of the doubt. It's going to be a hard job for teachers to do this, but I suspect for most of you, you'll get the benefit of the doubt. You'll get a good grade that allows you to then go on to further education in the future. If, however, you have any other questions, please put them in the comments beneath this video. And if you do need more help with your physics over the next few months, don't forget I've got websites for both GCSE and A-level. I've covered the entire course. There's loads there that can help you be more confident in your abilities to hopefully show you how to answer questions. And that's ultimately going to give you a higher chance of getting a good grade from your teachers. You can find everything over at physicsonline.com. So thank you, stay safe, and I'll be making plenty more videos over the coming months to support you. Thank you.